How do doctors know which antibiotic to give you when you have an infection? Stay tuned to find out. What's up guys, hope everyone's been doing well. For those of you who don't know, my name is Edgman and I'm a pharmacist and I enjoy making these videos about common questions patients have about medications or any healthcare related topic. Make sure you subscribe for more content. Now to the rest of the video. There's many different types of bacteria that cause an infection as well as many different types of infections. So there's a wide range of bacteria that cause, that cause like a skin infection, a lung infection, a uh, UTI, which is a urinary tract infection, and just to list a few. But there's many different types. So the age-old question is, or the age-old question I always have when I was a uh, student is, how do doctors know which antibiotic to give um, for an infection? Because if there's so many different types of bacteria, how do they know which bacteria it is? They just look at it, they, they don't observe it with a microscope. Like for example, when I went to a doctor's office where I had like a skin infection, they would look at it and prescribe me an antibiotic. But how do they know what the bacteria is that's causing it? So in this video, we're going to be talking about that and how they go about um, deciphering that as well as um, what tools they use. So with so many different types of bacteria, how do doctors know which antibiotic to give to help treat your infection? And the short answer is they do an educated guess. And so let's run through a little scenario. So let's pretend that you have a skin infection. So you go to your doctor and you say, hey doctor, I think I have a skin infection on my, on my arm here. Um, can you help me? And so what the doctor will do, they'll first deem it an actual um, bacterial infection. Maybe it's not an infection. First they'll deem it as an infection. And now you might need an antibiotic. So how does the doctor know? Is it maybe Staphylococcus that's causing that infection? Or is it Streptococcus? Or is it some other type of bacterial strain? They don't know at that exact moment. So what they do, they do an assessment saying, hmm, I think um, the most common types of bacteria from what I've learned in studies, what I've learned in practice, is these sets of bacteria. And what amazing tool we have in medicine is something called broad spectrum antibiotics, which is exactly what it sounds like. An antibiotic has, that has a wide range of coverage with many different types of bacteria. This, this helps a physician um, treat the infection without actually knowing what type of infection it exactly is. Because it doesn't matter what type of infection it is, as long as it's treated, right? So they, that's what they do in practice. For example, if you go to your doctor's office, they will never tell you like, this is exactly Staphylococcus aureus, or this is E. coli, or whatever. They are doing a probable guess based on symptoms and presentation. Now it happens when a doctor prescribes an antibiotic that is not effective in treating the infection. So let's say the doctor gave you an antibiotic for your skin infection, you take it for about a week or two weeks, and you see hey, your skin infection hasn't gone better and it actually has been getting worse. Then what do you do? And how does, this, now how does the doctor go about treating this infection now? It got even worse, you it let it sit for two weeks. The important thing, and what I want to stress in this video, is most, most of the time doctors do this depending on what type of infection it is, but getting a culture and susceptibility report is very important in treating um, infections. One, for um, getting the right antibiotic in the beginning, and second, not having the infection get worse. And I will go over this a little bit now. A culture susceptibility report is when they take a sample of your infection and they send it out to a lab or a facility, and they do two things. One, they identify the bacteria that's causing your infection, and two, they'll tell you which antibiotics are effective in treating that infection. And this is extremely important because it gives you a concrete way of treating your infection because it identifies, like I said, the actual bacteria that's causing the infection, as well as which antibiotics are effective. Because antibiotics are a miracle class of medications. They're very great, they're very effective in treating infections. However, you, the goal is to be on the right antibiotic for the least amount of time to be effective. Because you don't want to be on the wrong antibiotic, and also you don't want to be on the right antibiotic for too long, because antibiotics aren't good taking it long term. You want to be just enough to help treat the infection, but not over treat um, the infection that might cause side effects for you. So what a culture system the report does is it gives you that information. So it's very frustrating, for example, if you take an antibiotic without that culture report, and then it turns out that um, bacteria that you're treating was the wrong bacteria, and thus you now have an infection that may have gotten worse, and the actual bacteria might have gone stronger, because if you treat a bacteria with, with, with the wrong antibiotic, it might build resistance towards that bacteria and also resistance towards that um, antibiotic and also other antibiotics possibly. So that makes the infection worse, it makes the patient suffer for longer. So it's very, very important. I'm very keen on always getting a culture susceptibility report um, 
for I for me and also I recommend the patients to always ask their doctors to do it if they don't because um, it helps give concrete information, it helps limit antibiotic overuse as well as it just overall helps with the bacterial resistance problem and that we're currently facing. There will be some mild cases where a culture susceptibility report might not be recommended or required for treating like a very mild small infection but the general rule of thumb for me personally is also what I recommend to everyone is to have that co uh, concrete evidence of what the infection is so it's always treated properly and effectively. All right, guys, I wanted to show you guys an example of what a culture and susceptibility report is. Um, this is just off Google. It's not anyone's actual report. However, this is what doctors will look at or sometimes pharmacists will look, this, look at this as well. Um, here, for example, it says the, in the blood, the culture, this is the bacteria that's causing the infection. And what they do, they run um, different types of antibiotics and they see whether it's susceptible as or, or R resistant. So for example, if a doctor for this infection prescribed metronidazole, it wouldn't be effective because it's, it's an R, it's a resistant um, antibiotic. They have to prescribe something else here. And it gets a little more intricate because some of these medications, for example, not, might not be very present in the blood as well. So that, that's a little more in depth, but what, this is why it's so important because maybe metronidazole is a very effective medication for treating this, this bacteria, but if it's this specific case with this specific infection, it was resistant. So this is why it's very important to get a culture report for any type of bacterial infection. And this is like another example. In this case, they're all susceptible, so it's good to go for any of these, assuming it could penetrate to the actual infection site. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and learned something new. If you guys did, please give me a big thumbs up. And make sure to comment any feedback or questions you guys have for me in the comment section below. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.